Welcome to Canyon Lake Gorge in Central Texas between the towns of Austin and San Antonio. And we're gonna explore this amazing landscape that was carved out within just the last 20 years or so. Look at some of the rocks and geology preserved here. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here at the GSA conference in San Antonio, but took a day all out from the conference to go look at some of the local geology out in the field. So I thought I'd share with you some of this amazing landscape here at Canyon Lake Gorge. Everything here has been exposed over the last 23 or so years. Um, and there's been some really interesting discoveries that have occurred here. So let's go check this out together. So this canyon landscape was carved out by a large catastrophic flood that took place over the course of about a week or so in the summer of 2002. They'd had a tremendous amount of rainfall over about a week, about 35 inches of water fell. Um, it filled up the reservoir just upstream from here, Canyon Lake. And then this was the spillway. They never thought they'd actually have to release water down through the spillway, but the lake was totally full. They were releasing as much water as they could. And, um, and so the result was all the water coming through um, this area actually cut down to the level we see here. So that in places there's up to uh, maybe like 60, 70 feet of downward erosion. Uh, carving out a channel that's about 100 or so feet wide and exposing in the process uh, some of the subsurface geology. And now it's a park. It's a place you can come and check out the area and look at its fantastic geology. So let's go ahead and start now that we have some of the premise of exactly what occurred here by looking at um, the unit here. So the main unit that this gorge is carved into is called the Glen Rose Formation. This is a Cretaceous age limestone with some different types of units in it. This occurred during the Cretaceous about 110 million years ago, and this was deposited in a near shore environment. So basically from a, a tidal flat along the coastline to maybe an environment that was under a few tens of feet or so of water. And so within this, uh, limestone. You can see there's this upper unit here that's a little bit more solid, um, what we would call maybe like a pack stone. And then below that we have a unit that's a little bit more irregular and preserved within this unit are just lots and lots of fossils. So in this very tropical uh, setting here, there were just, just a tremendous amount of organisms. Let's see if we can find one here. Uh, let's see zoom in here on this one let's find this one here yeah here we go so we have a nice little uh, pectin fossil a clam fossil here and then even some of these rounded things uh, you can see back in here all just full of fossils uh, big and small and we've collected a few just kind of weathered out on the ground here so let me show you some of the the better ones we found so you've got uh, spiral shells like from these gastropods here. There's one. Uh, here's a little bit bigger gastropod shell. You can see that conical shell kind of spiraling upwards. And then maybe my favorite of all are these incredibly well-preserved uh, urchins, these echinoderms. See, there we go. So you can see actually the little spines there. The preservation on these is just really incredible. So these sea urchins uh, with the little ornamentation preserved. And even, I wouldn't have known this with not for our, our good ranger uh, volunteer here, even, um, if I can get this in here, these little spines. So these actually were the spines on the sea urchins that are preserved here uh, as well. So you can see one of those there. Uh, let's see what else we have in the collection. Maybe I'll just take you down to the, the board where we've been collecting a bunch of these. We've got more of these uh, bivalve fossils. Here's some more of these echinoderms or sea urchins, more clams. Just, you know, just a treasure trove of fossils here in this unit, the Glen Rose Formation. Uh, here's actually one preserved in the rock. You can see this... Uh, this gastropod or snail just above my thumb here. So again, a very warm tropical climate that was the main um, type of setting. And this was part of the Cretaceous interior seaway. So this was um, the ocean 
that stretched from this part of Texas adjacent to the Gulf of Mexico, right through the Plain States and into uh, the Arctic region. So North America was basically cut in two by this massive seaway uh, during the Cretaceous. So we're going to go explore a little bit more of the area here with our little ranger friend there and go check out some more things here. All right, so we've moved a little bit further upstream towards the lake uh, and the Glen Rose formation here starts to look a little bit different. Um, a little bit further down here, there's actually a fault that runs pretty much parallel to the gorge and the drainage here, again, carved out by this flooding event in 2002. But what's interesting is this fault, as you move along its length or its strike, starts to do some interesting things. And so let's go check out over here exactly um, what's going on. This is a fault system, normal fault, that's dropped one side down relative to the other. In this case, I believe it's the east side. Um, and so you can see really right here the juxtaposition between this intact bit of the Glen Rose formation and some of this material that's been shifted here along this fault. And uh, the research says that the fault moved about 15 to 20 million years ago. It's part of the Balcones fault zone, which occurs here in central Texas. Um, but here's where the fault comes down. And if you look just right in front of me here, you'll see a series of these ridges. These are a series of faults. Basically the fault that's coming through here is starting to splinter or what we call splay out. It breaks up into a number of faults that are um, sort of splintered off the main fault system. But the most striking feature in here is the fault planes themselves and the um, slick insides that we see down here. So if we come down to these fault plane surfaces, we can see that they're polished. Um, we can see these lines cutting through the rock here. So this is where the fault has, uh, where the rocks have moved on either side of the fault and the friction along the movement has created these lines or marks here. So there's one right here. In places we can see that the fault movement's actually broken up the rocks into smaller chunks, angular chunks. So that's what we would call a fault breccia. See a little zone of that right here where the rocks have been busted up and disaggregated a little bit. Um, beautiful exposures. This is just fantastic here. Uh, looking right here at the fault plane and again at all of these uh, slicken lines on the fault plane. Here's just another beautiful view here. The fault plane's incredibly polished. It's also a little bit corrugated. Um, probably hard to tell in the camera view from here, but it goes down, then it comes up, then it drops down, then it comes up. Let's see if we can maybe get that in from this side. Yeah, you can kind of see that here where it goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down as you come across here. So this is one of the splinters along the fault. Um, and then the another set here where the beds have been tilted. And then we get another set of faults off this backside here. So again, you can see some of these fault planes with the slicken lines on it there. Uh, and this one nicely kind of shows, you know, at least an outcrop here, um, maybe a couple feet, half a meter or so of offset. But as you trace that down, again, this is just what is exposed. So maybe isn't a perfect interpretation, but you can see that actually terminate this way. So this is a small little fault within this uh, bigger fault system. Stepping back, we get another little fault running through this way. And then stepping back a little bit further, we can see a few more of these here. So it's a pretty narrow zone of maybe, um, maybe like 20, 30 feet, something like six, seven, maybe up to maybe 10 meters at the most. Um, and then as you follow these splayed faults down this way towards the lake, going upstream, I suppose, here you see it forms a bit of a graben structure. So these faults merge back together just up here. And you can see a little bit of displacement here. Let's zoom in. You can see the fault coming right through here, 
dropping this side down. So you can see that section's been dropped down right along the main trace of the fault here. So really just fantastic exposure here, uh, just structures, uh, these fossils that we've seen here. And it's just remarkable that all this geology we've looked at that's been exposed has only been exposed for uh, about 23 years or so since 2002 when this big flooding, large catastrophic flooding event occurred. Oh, one more cool thing over here. Just saw this, this is the underside of a fault plane. So we're looking at the fault plane right here, but it's sort of overhanging, but it again shows these, um, it's smooth and it's showing some of these striations or slicken lines here. Fantastic stuff. So great structures, fossils, stratigraphy. And this is why they have uh, preserved this area as a park. They can come visit, uh, they do tours, there's information and such. So just amazing. Well, hey, thanks for joining me on this fun little adventure here in Central Texas, looking at Canyon Lake Gorge. Incredible structures, incredible fossils, uh, just a real treat. Special thanks to our good friend Jim, one of the volunteers here who was our guide, showed us around and took us to some of these great sites. So thanks again for your support of the channel, and we'll see you next time.